Welcome to Petra, the ancient capital city of the Nabataeans. Here we're standing at the treasury, the Khazne, carved out of the sandstone rock during the first century AD to commemorate the burial of one of the great Nabataean kings, Aratas IV, who was a contemporary of the Herods in Jerusalem. The Nabataeans were a wealthy Arabian people who established their kingdom in southern Jordan, modern day Petra, controlling the lucrative trade routes that came from the Arabian Peninsula all the way to the Mediterranean. And they established this great Greco Roman city that we can still visit today here in southern Jordan. Here we are standing in Petra's Seek, the very narrow canyon that goes for about a kilometer and a half that was a ceremonial entranceway into the ancient city. But more than just being the entrance to the city, it was also shows us the amazing engineering technologies of the Nab Nabataeans, and especially how they managed to survive in this desert landscape. All throughout the Seek, we see the water channels and the water harvesting techniques that the Nabataeans used to master their desert environment. Along the seeks, we see channels taking sp fresh spring water, surface water. It's also the dams built on either side of the seek that allow the Nabataeans to control the very dangerous and threatening floodwaters that could have threatened the city during the time they lived here. We first hear about the Nabataeans in the late 4th century BC, when they are described as a nomadic people centered around Petra, who were involved in trade and commerce. By the time of the first century, however, they had transformed Petra into the thriving capital city of a powerful kingdom that extended from southern Syria to North Arabia, rivaling the great regional powers of the day. Petra and the Nabataean kingdom was annexed into the Roman Empire in 106 AD, and it continued to be an important center throughout antiquity until trade disruptions and natural disasters brought about the city's gradual decline by the early medieval period. Here we are at Petra's Theater, built and rather carved out of the natural sandstone in the first century AD. And really one of the largest theaters we have in southern Jordan could have held up to 6,000 people for performances, plays, ceremonies. So this was really one of the hearts of the ancient city, really representing the cosmopolitan nature of the Roman world of the Nabataeans. Now we're walking up to the Temple of the Winged Lions, one of the main religious complexes of the Nabataeans. Perched on a high hill overlooking the city, the temple was most likely built in the first century AD for the Nabataean goddess Alusa. This grand two-story structure featured a central podium for a statue or stela of the goddess and was surrounded by a forest of columns, each topped by a capital in the shape of a winged lion, giving the temple its modern name. So here we're walking out of the ancient city of Petra. Behind us is the colonnaded street, which was really the heart of the ancient city. On either side of us, we had the major civic institutions of a classical Roman city, but under the Nabataeans. We had major temples, we had a theater complex, pools and gardens, a nymphaeum, public water fountains, all of the things that were needed of a contemporary Roman city, but built by the Nabataeans of the first century AD. After Roman annexation, Petra continued to thrive as a major city for centuries. Its continued importance is evidenced by the Petra Church, an amazingly well-preserved 6th century Byzantine basilica discovered near the heart of the ancient city. The church features an apse, a central nave, and two side aisles with beautiful mosaic floors decorated with animal and pastoral scenes. In one of the church's side rooms were found nearly 150 papyrus scrolls written in Greek that provide valuable insights into the daily lives of Petra's early Christian community, which flourished here during the 5th and 6th centuries.
thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and sign up for our digital newsletter so that you can stay up to date on everything from the world of biblical archaeology. And if you would like to see more, why not check out one of the videos on your screen right now?